Shoreditch is today one of the grooviest parts of London. It's a world of oat milk lattes, craft bars, pop-up street food stalls and fashionable retro shops. But it's real living history that I'm here for. And amongst all the hip and the retro, there stands a proper piece of the old East End. Sid's coffee stall has for the last 100 years been feeding Londoners with street food. Sid's granddaughter Jane still runs it. The, the most famous thing was a savannah slice at Sid's, which was a slice of bread, a smear of English mustard and a saveloy. We're still old fashioned. People say, oh, can I have a cappuccino or espresso or something. A cup of froth for four or five pounds, no, that's not us. We do good quality, best quality, loose leaf tea, which we have done since day one. No tea 19... bags. Oh. Although it's in this now gentrified part of town, it has its regulars, black cab drivers, shop and office workers, all looking for a good old fashioned cuppa and a chat. They do probably the best drink and sandwich, you know, around here for, for the price as well. Can't get another cup of tea around here for that price. I just bought a little sausage roll and a cup of tea. Is that your... My usual, usually, Is it? yeah. When well, you say usual, how often do you come here? Well, I try and come every day. It's got to be 20 years. 20 years, I've been mean, coming off and on, 20 years. It's just something you've just always been used to, standing up and having a cup of tea. But when you're standing here waiting for your bun or your coffee or your fried egg sandwich or whatever it is, you do get chatting to people and you find out what they do and what role they play locally. And it is a real community place. When SIDS first opened in 1919, people would have come for this street food because it was good quality and cheap, and that's all that they could afford. The Shoreditch area about 100 years ago was a very depressed area, but there was a lot of manufacture around here, uh, particularly the furniture trade. There were cabinet makers, furniture makers, um, veneerers, upholsterers, that kind of thing. There was a lot of um, activity on the streets. A lot of people would be going to the pubs, they'd pop off to the coffee shop on the way home, that kind of thing. And of course people coming out of work, people working longer hours than we do, so they would need something on the way home. People would also hang around SIDS late at night, and it could at times be somewhere you might not have wanted to be. People would come out the pubs in the evening, about midnight when they chucked out, and they'd be hanging around the coffee stalls, basically waiting for someone they could mug. And the police would come along and try and move them along, and they'd say, well, officer, I fancy a cup of coffee. They'd say, well, you're not drinking one. I don't quite fancy it yet, I'll have one in a minute. And the police knew that they were waiting for someone to come along. They couldn't do anything about it. Jane's brother Stephen, who also helped run the stall, told me that Sid's wife wouldn't stand for any nonsense, though. On numerous occasions, people would try and rob my grandmother, and she would have the carving knife, and she would stab that into the counter of the stall to stop these people getting anywhere near the till. Uh, it was quite a, quite a woman. At the time, Sid's must have looked rather grand. It's a horse-drawn carriage that isn't going anywhere. He was retired out of the First World War and he had his war pension. When he saw what was going on with all the different stalls and things, he thought, oh, that's what I'd like to get into. And he decided that he would have a stall, but he didn't want just a stall. He wanted something special. The original stall didn't have electricity. It does now, of course, but it comes from a pretty unusual source. In those days, he wasn't hooked up to the electric. When they converted the old gas lamppost here, they also did a feed-in to the stall. So your electric's running off that lamppost? Yes. It was another thing that he managed to get them to do for him, was to plumb the stall into the mains underneath. So if anybody wanted to move us, which has happened before when they wanted to tarmac over the cobblestones underneath oh, right. us. Yeah. 
and they said to my dad well you know you can't um, no we have to move you and my dad said well we can't be moved because we're linked up to the electric and we're plumbed into the water so they said oh well that's okay we'll just do round you and that's when they put the curb stones round and you've still got the original cobbles underneath. Under you? Yes. The stall did move once though in 1931 but not for long. Don't quite know how it happened but they wanted to use the coffee stall in a film that they were making up at Elstree Studios. They bought a low loader truck to put it on back and they drove all the way up to Elstree like that. The um, lady who was the star in it had to have a, an actor push her to the floor. Oh, This chilly boucher, as she was known, was sort of prostrate on the floor, but she did have a cushion. Shoreditch is now a very different place to the one depicted by Chili Boucher, though. The big change really has been over the last few decades when, in the late 20th century, a lot of artists and creative types were coming to the area. But inevitably, where the creatives go, fashion will follow. And so this whole gentrification thing kicked off with a whole new class of resident with uh, their own pubs, their own coffee shops, that kind of thing. Sadly, that change meant that SIDS has gone out of fashion, though. We are not as busy as we used to be, where we used to have people queuing all around the side of the bank. And we used to have three, sometimes four people serving behind here. But today, it's a different world, unfortunately. Now it's the 100 years that we've done Grandad and Dad proud, and maybe it's time to uh, move on and say, let's put the stall into a museum so that everybody can enjoy it for eternity. If somewhere like this goes, then you lose a part of Shoreditch that's original and there's no point coming to see Shoreditch if there's nothing original left, nothing with a bit of character, nothing with a bit of charm. What's the point of coming if it just looks like the rest of London? There's no point seeing it. There's no doubt that Shoreditch in recent years has become a vibrant place yet again. But it's a real shame if the new people inhabiting these streets pass this place by. Sid's coffee store has survived the Blitz, a couple of recessions, and has stayed in the same family for 100 years. It is to be cherished. So if it can no longer remain on this street, let's hope at least that a museum will take it for future generations to see.